Does an impedance mismatch at the antenna feed point cause common mode currents to flow on the outside of the shield of your coaxial cable? Google's AI says yes. Hmm. Victor Echo 6 Whiskey Golf Mike. Thank you. You are about 5'5 into Alberta. How about ChatGPT? Does it do any better? Well, I asked it, does an impedance mismatch at an antenna feed point where the feed line is coaxial cable cause common mode currents to flow on the outside of the coax shield? ChatGPT thought for a bit and came back and said yes. An impedance mismatch at the antenna feed point can lead to common mode currents flowing on the outside of the coaxial cable shield. When there is a mismatch, some of the energy transmitted may not be effectively radiated by the antenna, causing a portion of that energy to be reflected back along the feed line. Hmm. So, I said, please re-examine your answer. Does the reflected energy from the impedance mismatch travel back along the inside of the coax as a TEM wave, or does it cause common mode currents on the outside of the coax? Let's see what it has to say. Oh, look. The reflected energy due to an impedance mismatch at the antenna feed point travels back along the inside of the coaxial cable as a TEM wave. This reflected wave consists of the energy that is not transmitted into the antenna and is traveling back towards the source. However, when there is an impedance mismatch, it can also induce common mode currents on the outside of the coax shield. Hmm. Okay, so I decided to bully ChatGPT a little bit. I'm going to tell it that common mode currents are not caused by impedance mismatch at the antenna feed point. The energy reflected back by the mismatch travels back along the inside of the coax as a TEM wave. Let's see what it has to say now. You are correct. Common mode currents themselves are not directly caused by the impedance mismatch at the antenna feed point. The mismatch primarily leads to the reflection of energy which travels back along the inside of the coaxial cable. Common mode currents on the outside of the coax can occur due to issues such as an unbalanced antenna system or inappropriate grounding but are not a direct result of the mismatch itself. Okay, well that's interesting. So... Am I right or is it right? And it's just agreeing with me because I was being a bully. <laughs> so I decided to set up an experiment here. I'm going to use my signal generator to produce a 100 megahertz sine wave. And I'm going to send that down a piece of coaxial cable. And I'm going to create various different circumstances where we have a good load, a bad load. And uh, we're going to see if we can cause common mode currents to occur on the outside of this coaxial cable because of an impedance mismatch. So what I've done is I've built a um, an RF probe, if you will, out of a toroid and 10 wraps of number 28 magnet wire. Uh, this is for filtering because I have overhead some uh, fluorescent lights and they um, make a lot of electrical noise. So when I was experimenting, I noticed that I needed this to filter some of that noise so we could see what was happening with the uh, currents on the coaxial cable. So in order to prove that my probe here is actually working, I've connected an antenna which radiates very well to my signal generator and I'm producing the 100 megahertz signal and you can see that this probe is picking up the signal. I have the probe placed over top of the coaxial cable. The signal is currently turned off. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and you can see that there is pretty much nothing but noise there. And let's go ahead and move this along. I've got a good load here. Move this along the uh, coaxial. Let's see if we can see the whole thing here. So let's uh, go along here. 
and see there is no common mode along the outside of the coax. So let's go ahead and turn this into a really bad load. I'm going to disconnect it all together, which means that this is going to be an open end and we're going to create a situation where pretty much 100% of the energy coming down the line is going to be reflected right back. So if uh, what we're led to believe on chat GPT and the Google AI is correct, probably we're going to see at least a little bit of common mode on the outside of the shield here. Okay, so I've gone ahead and disconnected the load. At this point, we should have everything coming back down the line. It's a complete reflection. And if the um, theory is correct that uh, having an a, a impedance imbalance at the antenna feed point, which that's what this is, causes common mode currents to flow on the outside of the coax cable, we should see a lot of common mode on the outside of the cable and we see nothing. So you can see the output is still on and we got nothing there. If I take and slide the uh, probe along the coaxial cable, there is virtually no signal there on the scope. But if I take and go like this and pull the connector through, let's see if I can show everything at once here. I'll take of the, uh, it's right here. The signal is right here. It's not here, it's not down the outside of the coax. It's, it's there. As I move the connector through where it's in the uh, range of being picked up, you can see that if I get it in the right spot here, it picks up. So the signal is definitely there, but it's not being reflected down the outside of the coax. So I think that's pretty much debunked at that point. So just to prove that my probe is actually capable of picking up common mode currents off the outside of the coaxial cable, I've gone and built a device like that. You're never going to have this circumstance in real life on your, uh, in a real station. But what I've done here is this is a splitter and it's sending common mode, the same phase signal down each of these two lines. So I've taken and I'm feeding it in phase or common mode signals, one to the outer shield and one to the center pin. So I'm feeding the same exact signal down both sides, the inner and the outer section of the coaxial cable. So let's see what the result is. Okay, so you can see the scope in the background there, and you can see that there is definitely signal there, and I'm just going to take and move the probe down the coax, and if you see, we can move this all the way down. So there is definitely signal on the outside of that coax right now. So this proves that this device actually does work. And once again, if we're feeding this section of coax normally, where the uh, signal is being placed on the center conductor and the outer shield is being connected correctly to the uh, signal generator, and you can see that we have the probe here and the scope in the background, you can see that there is no common mode on the outside of the coaxial cable, and it is absolutely 100% disconnected. So this would mean, again, that 100% of the energy arriving at this end here is being reflected back, but it's not going down the outside of the shield. It's traveling back down the inside of the coaxial cable the same way that the incident wave came down the cable. The reflected wave is going back as a TEM wave down the inside of the cable. Those standing waves that happen that we're talking about are happening on the inside of the coaxial cable. Standing waves don't necessarily mean that you have uh, common mode currents or standing waves on the outside of the jacket. Uh, there are other circumstances that cause this and uh, maybe we'll get into that. You might have noticed at the beginning of the video when we did a search on Google and the Google AI came up and gave us an incorrect answer, as did ChatGPT. Um, let's uh, 
Let's go ahead and take a look at a reliable source, the RRL Antenna Book. I happen to have the 25th edition here. And I, um, I found a section in here that actually deals with the subject that we're, uh, we're talking about in this video here. Let's take a read here. Myths about SWR. Often stated in the same breath as the first one above is that high SWR or reflected power will cause radiation from a transmission line. SWR has nothing to do with excessive radiation from a line. Common mode currents on feed lines do radiate just like on antennas, but they are not directly related to SWR. So if a impedance mismatch at the antenna feed point is not the cause of common mode currents on the outside of the coaxial cable shield, then what is actually going on? In order to form a bit of a picture in our minds of how this works, we might want to take a look at the uh, the beginning of the situation here with the generator. So our radio transmitter starts by placing a voltage on the center conductor. If you look at this here, the center conductor, um, th that voltage then forms an electric field within the uh, dielectric of the coaxial cable. So in this case, we, we show the, uh, the direction of current flow going this way. So we can use the right hand rule. If we point our thumb up, this is coming, this is the bottom of the coax here, and this is coming out of the page at us. So you can see using the right hand rule then that the magnetic field then would go in this direction. So <clears throat> this field forms in the dielectric. Uh, currents and voltages form along the outer edges or on the surface of the center conductor and on the inside edge of the shield and um, <clears throat> these currents help to carry along the uh, the electromagnetic wave because the wave is moving in a transverse manner along the coaxial cable they actually call it a transverse electromagnetic wave so <clears throat> as this wave is traveling along it comes then to the end of the coaxial cable at which point on the shield side it sees one of two paths the first path, I guess, is up along the antenna, and the second path is down along the outside of the coaxial cable. And it's um, <clears throat> skin effect primarily that causes the, the currents to stay on the surfaces of the conductors. Now looking at this point right here, uh, this balance of current that determines how much is going to go up onto the antenna and how much is going to flow down along the um, outside of the coaxial shield is determined at this point by what's called the common mode impedance and the outer portion of this shield here what affects that common mode impedance on the outer portion of the shield well there's a number of things one is the coaxial cable length and another is the uh, the grounding situation and and interconnection uh, of the grounds and uh, the equipment to the cases of the uh, of your station equipment and things uh, that all affects the <clears throat> what winds up being the common mode impedance seen at this point so if this impedance turns out to be very low, a good portion of the current intended to go on to the antenna is actually going to come back down the outer portion of your coaxial cable. And this behaves just like an antenna and it radiates and does all kinds of bad things. So one way that we can stop this from happening is by ensuring that there is a high common mode impedance at this point. So how do we do that? Well, we use a one-to-one -one current ballon or a common mode choke. So that would help to ensure that this always presents a high common mode impedance here. And no matter what the condition or length and things is, is going on here, and that will help to reduce the uh, common mode currents down to a level that it can be ignored at that point. So other than having um, an unlucky length of coax or uh, a, a, a grounding situation and length of coax together that uh, um, results in a half wavelength, which is apparently a very uh, unlucky situation to have because it winds up presenting a very low impedance here. Um, what else can cause common mode currents to form on the outer jacket. Well, the ARRL antenna book lists a few things. Um, <clears throat> unequal heights 
of the antenna. So let's say you've got your dipole set up as an inverted V and one side is at 8 feet and one side's at 16 feet. That can do it. So basically any kind of asymmetry in the system. Unequal heights, unequal conductor lengths. If these two antenna um, segments are not the same length. Uh, nearby objects, so uh, conductive objects like a tin roof on your garage or trees or things like that can can cause a coupling from the one side and not the other which can disrupt the balance of the current flows on the uh, legs of the antenna. Those are some of the things that are mentioned. So back to the uh, electromagnetic wave here. As it comes up at, to the end of the coaxial cable it is coupled onto the antenna and at the center of the dipole the uh, the current is at its maximum and at the ends the voltages are its maximum so this side when this is going one direction the voltage is going this way uh, the other side will be equal and opposite in its current and voltage distribution there um, so one thing that I've always wondered is there's these currents that go down these wires but there the wire just ends there and there's nothing here there's no like resistor to ground or anything like that so what's going on well as it turns out when this standing wave forms on this antenna the fields that are developed around the legs of the antenna couple with each other as the field is oscillating back and forth as the uh, standing wave is oscillating back and forth and these fields generate uh, in a near field and a far field um, they then take and couple that energy into free space and, and produce a uh, an electromagnetic wave or a radio wave that um, that you can transmit to uh, well around the world if you're a ham radio operator so why is understanding that important? Well, back to the symmetry thing. Um, this is why it's recommended that we never take and run our coax line uh, parallel to one of the legs of the antennas. We should always maintain a, uh, a straight off cable run for as far as we can. And the reason why is because these fields that form around the legs are equal and opposite. So when this field comes in this way, this one's going that way. And so what's happening then is, is that the, the, um, the currents on that form from this coupling to the outer shield will cancel. So there won't be any net effect on the, uh, as far as common mode currents on the, um, on the coaxial feed line. In this case, it's not symmetric. So it's going to couple to this one and only this side. This side, there's not going to be anything to uh, to cause an equal and opposite to cancel it out. So at this point, then you're going to wind up with common mode currents on the uh, coaxial cable. So in the case of using things like chat GPT to do some research, I've actually found it helpful. Um, the conclusions that it makes sometimes are not correct as I showed at the beginning of the video, but you can go down when it's done and it's, it's a very quick method to come up with references. So I can go ahead and ask it for its references. And it'll point you to very good quality sources of information that you can then go and look up and read for yourself and form hopefully correct conclusions. Well, I hope you guys were able to uh, get something out of the demonstration on the bench there. And uh, I guess it's time for me to see what's going on on the bands here. It looks like we got some local rag chewing going on. It's a very interesting hobby, and the more I learn about it, the more questions I have. And of course, then the more research I have to do to find out the whys and hows of everything, how everything works exactly. So until next time, I have to say 7-3 for tonight. This is Victor Echo 6, Whiskey Oscar.